Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment of our program is brought to you by Nova Copy, located right here in Knoxville. All the backing, all the power of a national company, company Nova Copy has five locations across East Tennessee. So whether you, let's say you're in McMinn County, my old stomping ground, you call Nova Copy right there, you'll get them to uh, come down and give you a free cost analysis. They've also got offices in Chattanooga and across the state. Uh, nobody finer in terms of helping your business save money. Nova Copy. Go to NovaCopy.com. See for yourself if I'm not telling you the truth and when have I not told you the truth. It's all I do. I'm not Bill Belichick up here. I'm Mr. Truth. All right. Uh, guys, offensive coordinator position. We talked a lot about Mike DeBoer, who seems to be the leader in the clubhouse. Uh, but there are other names. You know, that's, and Nothing's done until it's done. Uh, let's look at our big uh, Nova Copy drawing board over there. You got Zach Azani. We'll just quickly touch on each of these guys. Zach Azani, Tennessee wide receivers coach. Some people wondering if he might be promoted up. He's also a, a possible candidate at Central Michigan. Right. The belief there is that Central Michigan wants to get a Butch Jones guy. That could be Jancic, who's been with maybe John Jancic, defensive coordinator, who's been with Butch Jones longer. Or if they want that Butch Jones offense, it could be Zach Azani. Uh, thoughts on Zach Azani and his opportunity to move up? Do you see Tennessee going in that direction? Let's say DeBoard's off the board. Off the DeBoard, does Zach Azani get a real solid look? I think he does. And, and if I think I think if DeBoard doesn't take it and it doesn't work out, and DeBoard goes NFL instead of Tennessee, I think Azani's the leading candidate. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, I I would be surprised. I don't see a reason why he wouldn't get a, a good strong look. I and think he's also he an deserves offensive it. coordinator yeah. before yeah. You know, yeah. at Western Kentucky. And the, it, you wonder is there a chance here you wind up with DeBoard? Uh, for most of his career, has coached tight ends and offensive line. I think he coached quarterbacks at some tiny school in like 1986, but that's it. Uh, you wonder, is there any chance here of keeping, of getting the board in and then giving a run game coordinator, pass game coordinator type setup? Yes, and, and it would make sense with Azani, you'd be the pass game coordinator. Yeah. So, yes, I'd, or assistant to the assistant of the assistant coach. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's I, all I do in the think titles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, let's go back to the big board here. We got Calvin McGee, co offensive coordinator and running backs coach at Arizona. The reason he's up there, uh, he was coaching for Rich Rodriguez. He, that is the Butch Jones offense, very much of its Rich Rod family tree. Mm -hmm. Calvin McGee and Butch Jones actually work together at West Virginia. Next, you see T. Martin, the uh, wide receiver coach at Southern Cal. I just don't, fans want to know about it. I don't see it happening. I don't think Butch Jones is going to go down that road again. And I also think that some of the same obstacles that were there for T. Martin the last time be there this time. Billy Napier, wide receiver coach at Alabama, who has also been offensive coordinator at Clemson, has some good offenses there. He's been at, this would be an opportunity to hurt Alabama a little bit, continue their attrition. Uh, Mike Norvell, offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach at Arizona State. He's on there because he is of the Todd Graham tree which is a branch off of the Rich Rodriguez tree, and they run that same type of system. Kurt Roper, former mm -hmm. offensive coordinator at Florida, former offensive coordinator under David Cutcliffe at Duke, has been at Tennessee before. Um, and then you got Rod Smith, the, the last one. He's co-offensive coordinator and quarterback coach at Arizona, along with Calvin McGee. Again, that's that Rich Rodriguez thing. I'm gonna take a drink of water before my mouth dries out here. I'll let you guys talk. Thoughts on the rest of that list? Start with T. Martin. Well, the obvious, obviously, there's an omission up there. Peyton Manning. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I'm hearing about. All right. He's in on a billboard around town. That's to right. I, well, we, we have heard, I have heard Jim Bob Cooter, who's actually yeah. shooting yep. up the ranks yeah. in the NFL. I don't think yep. he's coming to college. Um, Casey Clawson's coaching high school in California. Yeah. George Quarles, who I think that ship sailed long ago. And I don't think a head coach... Tennessee, I don't think Tennessee would go there due to the danger of having to dismiss him and how unpopular that would be if something went wrong. So I don't think, and I don't think George Quarles, if he wanted college, I think he would have pursued it long ago and he would have been darn good at it. Uh, but in terms of the guys you see up there, uh, we've talked to Zani, we've talked to Board, McGee, Martin, Napier, Norvell, Roper, Smith, any of those names intrigue you at all? Roper does. He intrigues me now. At Florida, it didn't work out. At Duke, under David Cutcliffe, they did run some zone read with, with Anthony Boone at right, quarterback. Right. And then they had a special quarterback that came in to just kind of Tebow it. Right. But uh, I think he can coach either one. I, again, it didn't work at Florida, but, but he intrigues me. I think he's a very bright young coach. I don't think T. Martin, you, you mentioned it earlier, the interview situation, the way it came down the last time he came in, I don't see Butch Jones going and down his, that road. His 
wife evidently prefers to be in Southern California was was a factor before. I don't yes. know if that's in changed. In the right. recording artist yeah. artist business. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I think some of those same obstacles are going to be yeah. there this time around, right. family and, and otherwise. Um, I I wonder. So we're looking at Azani, Debord, maybe Roper. It would be interesting to see how much play Roper gets, you know, because he's mm -hmm. out of work right now. You mm -hmm. wonder how much he's pushing for it. You wonder mm -hmm. how many connections, if any, he has at all yeah. to Butch Jones. But I'm with you. Roper, I wouldn't worry about Florida making him look bad. I, I would still consider him a pretty darn good coach to consider, and I wouldn't hang all the Florida on him because I think part of that was they just didn't have a quarterback or skilled position players. My, I, right now, my money is on DeBoer or Azani on that list. Okay. Anybody else you want to throw out there, Jimmy? Uh, G.A. Mangus is a name that came up. He's at South Carolina. I, I don't think they would go that route, but that is a name that I had heard as a possibility. All right. Okay, very good. When we come back, we're going to talk about recruiting. We're going to, I hope I didn't just hit the microphone with my pen. If I did, I'm sorry to deafen everyone out there. Uh, we're going to talk about recruiting and the impact that Mike Bajakian's departure has had, if any. We'll talk about the transfer situation, a lot of guys leaving. We'll also talk about Marcus Ford very quickly. So come on back on the Sports Source. Follow the Sports Source online at sportsource.tv and on Twitter at SportsSourceTV. That screws something up.